Here he is at a, at a later stage. <laughs> he's only got it on the, uh, he's got black, look, yes, brown, on the top of his head, down his back. Um, now the bad guys in the wind of the willows were the stoats and the weasels, remember? Now stoats are short tailed weasels, remember that? And this was in England. And the stoats there are as big as our long tailed weasels are here, so it's entirely appropriate for a long tailed weasel to be right there with the wind in the wheel. <laughs> now, he turned white, he was white during the winter time, and then he turned back brown again. And here he is right when, when uh, he still got a little bit of white here, and when they turn brown, they start at the top and go down. So it's just the reverse. And he is down, he's, he's getting his, his yellow stuff along here, but he's still got more white on his, on his, a little bit of white on his chin to you, to, to. How long does the color chin. change take? Um, is it the same? It takes about a month to a month and a half. Both summer and winter? Both summer and winter, they shed out the old hair, shed it, bring in new hair. And um, so here he is, again, this is about the same stage. And this was, if I remember right, this was the first day he zeeped. And, <laughs> He'd been months without zeeping. He turned brown, he started zeeping again, he zeeped all summer. Was he littered by his baby? No, he just was uh, Yeah, you gotta, with, with the mustelids, you have to, you know, if you kind of have a weasel in the house, you live with what he's going to do, and he defecated where he defecated. Roger, as long as we're talking about that, what is it about weasel poo that drives my dogs nuts? I have no clue. <laughs> Why do they roll? They love rolling weasel. Oh, oh, well, now dogs are rolling all sorts of stuff. They like weasels. Yeah, they, anything that smells really, really nifty, you know, if it smells good, like dead fish, oh, God, dead fish is great. Now, why dogs roll and stuff? Nobody knows. We know that wolves do the same thing. And when a wolf has rolled in, in, um, in some sort of cool stuff and comes back to, to greet the other members of the pack, they all gather around, wag their tails and sniff and think, God, that's cool, where'd you find this stuff? <laughs> but, um, but we don't know exactly what it means, and we don't know why they do it. We just know that they do it, and it gets everybody excited. It's, uh, they don't, it, it's not food, it's mostly just really cool, novel, novel smells. I prefer weasel. Yeah, well, that could be, wouldn't deny it. Roger? Yes. When you have these as pets, so to speak, for quite a while, a year or, mm -hmm. or, or longer, you don't, don't you worry about getting bit? Or you know, when you're playing with them, they won't bite you? Or they don't bite us, no. You don't grab them. Yeah. The only time that Lou bit me was when I grabbed him. And I didn't really reach out and grab him. I just, he was in my hand, and I wrapped my fingers around it, and he said, don't do that. And he, and he bit me on the thumb. Um, oh, yeah. The <laughs> Kansi gave me this hand signal here. <laughs> the, we, the first day we had, we had um, Lou, we had him in a, in a big hardware cloth cage. And we, had a, we built a door into it so that we could reach a hand in, because we wanted to see if we could habituate him to us. And Kansi put her hand in, and he reached out and he grabbed her engagement ring on her left hand. Um, and he, no, it was her right hand. Because um, she couldn't put her engagement ring and a wedding ring on at the same time because the wedding ring was too thick and they were different gold and... and <laughs> anyway, um, and the engagement ring is, um, is petrified wood. And Lou came up and grabbed the petrified wood and tugged on it. But he didn't bite her. Uh, down at, at the um, at the Kawishwi Field Lab, when I was working on <coughs> fishers up here one winter, we had uh, a male short-tailed weasel living in the, the big log cabin with us. And he'd come out in the evening and we, we'd feed him pieces of venison. And uh, if you held on to the venison, he he charge at you, and he he hit your hand 
with his teeth. But he didn't bite. And I'd learned that if I just kept holding on to the venison, he'd hit my hand without biting, and then he'd just settle down. See, what he, what he wanted, when he hit your hand, you drop the venison, he'd take the venison and run away. I mean, he's not so dumb. So I just held on to the venison, and he and I had a tug of war for a while, and then he just settled down and ate it while I held it. So they're, 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 not, they're not big on biting if they don't have to. That's a long way around them. Roger, how old was Lou when he got him? He it was a year and a half. Oh, so no. it wasn't just a tiny No, he wasn't a year and a half. He was a youngster. He was dispersing when we got him. When, what did you say when we how caught old, him? How old, when you were habituating him, how old was he? Oh, he, he was a youngster, yes. Mm -hmm. He was born in April. We caught him in August, just as he was dispersing from his mother. I misunderstood your question. Sorry. <clears throat> He lived a year and a half. Is that long or short? About normal. Okay. Um, the average life for wild weasels is um, is about a year and a half, but it depends on how abundant food is when they're when they're the year that they're born. If food is real abundant, lots of voles, uh, the males especially will grow big, and then the vole population usually crashes and they have a large food requirement because their bodies are big um, and the food just disappears. So they tend to live on average less than a year and a half. The ones that are small tend to live more than a year and a half and the maximum age is about 10. Yeah, so this big tail on, on the distribution of, of, of lifespan. Um, the the advantage of being big is that you get to breed more often because during the breeding season you're dominant. Uh, the disadvantage is that you run out of food faster and you probably only get one breeding season. So they're trade-offs. Coat color change. <clears throat> Start brown, go to white because the white goes up the side and then come back around the brown again. So living with one as you did, did was it shedding or was yeah, he it was, yeah, he, okay. oh, he shed. So you yeah. found they completely shed out, mm -hmm. and what happens is is um, it's a hormone deal that stimulates the 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 production of, of um, melanin in the hair, or it doesn't depending on on whether the days are getting longer or shorter. So they produce whole new hairs, and yeah, there's weasel hair. But but it, there's not a whole lot of hair from a weasel. I mean, but but he shut out completely. <clears throat> okay, youngsters. Um, these guys, uh, the the three weasels, have all have different reproductive systems and and uh, different reproductive patterns. They all tend to give birth in in mouse in vol nests either under the ground or in the surface of the ground in one of these um, grass tangled uh, sorts of nests. And so here you've got um, two young short tails. Um, and you can see that, that this female, uh, this, this, yeah, this female has got uh, a mane on the back of her neck. And I'll get back to that in just a little bit. Um, here they are, about about seven, eight weeks old. The mane is no, no, no. Um, yeah, about eight weeks old. The mane is gone. The eyes are still closed. But at this age, about eight weeks, eyes still closed. When the mother brought a, a baby mouse, a pinky, to them, these guys would would sort of scramble, crawl out of their nest, and. Um, and, scram and compete with each other to, to get the pinky. Sometimes they pull it in two, he's pulling it at it, um, and, and they eat it. So if they were nursing, their eyes were shut, um, and they were eating pinkies. So their eyes didn't, didn't open for eight weeks? They yeah. didn't have any vision? That's right. Wow. Uh, that's about the same age as Fisher's. 
they, their development is completely different from dogs and cats. Remember, these are really different critters. Um, females reach, reach just about full size by the time of their first summer, and then they stay the same weight the rest of their lives. Males don't reach full, full weight until they're over a year old. And, uh, and they weigh about twice as much as females in, in all of the species. Now, least weasels have the most straightforward reproductive system. Um, <clears throat> youngsters that are born early in the summer can reach sexual maturity by late in the summer and breed both males and females. If if the vole population is really, really high, sometimes they will even have a litter or two during the winter time under the snow. Most of the time, though, they just have one litter a year. And most, most least weasels breed for the first time when they're one year old. Okay, so this really, really high reproductive output only happens um, when the vole, vole population is really high and there's lots of food. You got that? Pretty straightforward sort of system. Yes? Going back to the, um, the nest, um, during the rest of the year, do the adults simply kill an animal and then use that nest? Yeah, or do usually. They don't build their own nest. They don't build their own nest, no. They'll, they'll take advantage of what they can find. And is that true with all of the that's all of them, yeah. Long tail weasels. <clears throat> Long tail weasels breed in August, shortly after youngsters become independent. And adult males do more breeding than young males, but females that have just become independent are reproductively active, and, and adult females are reproductively active. Um, the young ones that had litters earlier, they all breed in, in, in about August. The developing blastocysts reach the, excuse me, the developing zygotes reach the blastocyst stage, which is about 200 cells, about, it's about a ball of cells, about the size or a little bit smaller than the head of a pin. And it's at this stage that the developing fetus implants in the uterine wall, the placenta develops, and, um, and all the rest of development occurs, except in long-tailed weasels, the blastocyst does not implant. It goes dormant. It sits dormant in the uterus until the following April, and then about the same time that they're, that they're changing from white to brown, those blastocysts become active, implant in the uterine wall, and a normal gestation ensues. That's a cool system. Is the gestation <laughs> roughly the same between short and long tail? Ah, uh, we'll come back to that. <laughs> short tails do something even cooler. But, uh, uh, so there's a, what's called delayed implantation. And it is impossible to tell by you know, hormones or, or any physiological measurement whether a female long-tailed weasel is pregnant during the winter time.